an engineering student wants to measure the strain experienced by an aluminum bench during a University of Florida football game. Now the strain gauge used to take this measurement has a gauge factor of two, a resistance of 350 ohms, and an initial length of three millimeters. After a touchdown, the resistance is found to have changed to 420 ohms. The increase in length of the strain gauge is most close to what? So this problem is asking us to determine the increase in length of this element within the strain gauge. So there's a number of different components within this problem statement that I would like to hone in on. First, let's, let's start off with what a strain gauge is. So what is a strain gauge? A strain gauge is a device that quantifies and measures the strain on an object, which is pretty obvious. A strain gauge operates on the principal advantage of the physical property of electrical conductance and its dependence on a conductor's geometry. Now a single strain gauge, or multiple for that matter, can be attached directly to any object or system of elements using some special form of adhesive. After being put into this position, the strain gauge, and more specifically the conductor within that strain gauge, experiences deformation at the same rate of the object which it is placed on experiences. Now this deformation causes the conducting element within the strain gauge to deform and in doing so, due to this change in geometry, causes a change in electrical resistance that can be measured and attributed to the associated strain. Now in practice, if the conductive strip, the length of that conductive strip of metal is placed under a compressive force, it will broaden and it will shorten resulting in the electrical resistance to decrease end over end. Now on the other hand, if the same conductive strip of metal is stretched in tension, it will become skinnier and longer, resulting in the electrical resistance to increase end over end. Now from this resistance measurement, increase or decrease within the strain gauge, the amount of induced stress can be determined from that. So here's a typical illustration of a strain gauge. It, as you can see, those blue lines, horizontal lines, are uh, the thin conductive strips. And when the strain gauge is in tension, it increases the length, obviously, and thus it increases the resistance. On the other hand, if it's a compression force, it decreases the length and it decreases the resistance as well. All right, so that's basically what a strain gauge is. What about the gauge factor? Because if we hop back to our problem, we see that we uh, the strain gauge has a gauge factor of two. So we got to put some definition around that. What is it? Now the gauge factor is the ratio of fractional change in electrical resistance to the fractional change in length. So the fractional change in electrical resistance, delta R, to the fractional change in length, that's delta L over L, other known as strain. Know that from mechanics and materials. Or in other terms, the gauge factor represents the ratio of change in the gauge resistance to the change in length or strain in the gauge. Now, if we hop back to page 125 of our NCES reference handbook, we can hone in on this little section up here in the upper portion of the page and it's going to dial us in on what exactly a gauge factor is it'll give us a nice little short definition of it if we hit some type of conceptual problem on the exam but it also gives us that formula so there you see that general formula gf is equal to delta r over r divided by delta l over l which the change in length divided by the length is the strain so there's our general formula. We went in ahead and pulled it over. Now in application of strain gauges, a high degree of sensitivity is desired to acquire the most accurate data that's possible. So a high gauge factor will indicate a relatively large resistance change for a given strain where such a change is not experienced or if it's a lower gauge factor, it's not as sensitive. So the same strain isn't measured to the most accurate position that it could possibly measure at. So we definitely want a high degree of sensitivity and that's what the gauge factor is going to tell us. Now, one more little piece of information that's given to us in our NCES reference handbook, again on page 125, 
we hone in on this area and we see that the gauge factor for a metallic strange gauges is typically around two. So this is a very important piece of information of note because some problems are just going to tell you that a metallic strain gauge is used. It's not going to give you the gauge factor, but you're going to actually need it somehow in some way. And there's no other way to find it because we have no other, other resources or references to look into other than it being noted in the actual practice problem or us knowing it from this little piece of information that is given to us. So always remember that a metallic strain gauge, the gauge factor for it is typically around two. Now, one more thing I want to say before we hop over to just uh, dial in this uh, problem. When you go and use control F on the exam to look for certain terms, if you don't know where strain gauge is, the NCS reference handbook is notorious for not being consistent in how they spell gauge. To some of us, like me, I was taught that gauge is G-A-U-G-E, -E, and they use that gauge in other areas of the, the handbook. But in this case, they use G-A-G-E. So just a reminder, if you are a G-A-U-G-E guy, gal, and you search it and you can't find it, don't fail to go G-A-G-E, do them both simultaneously so you can at least find it. Just a head, heads up. All right, so with our formula, our gauge factor formula, let's go ahead and pull that over to our practice problem. We know GF is the gauge factor. We got the change in resistance. We have the nominal resistance. That's when it's just placed on and prior to the deformation of the object. We got our change in length. We got our nominal length. Again, that is its a initial length. And then we got the normal strain sensed by the gauge. So what are we given? We're given that the gauge factor is two. We know that the nominal resistance is 350 ohms. We know that the nominal length is three millimeters. And we know that the final resistance is 420 ohms. So he, again, here's our standard formula. We have everything we need to possibly uh, put into this uh, formula to determine what the increase in length is. We want to know what delta L is. We have everything we need. So let's go ahead and plug in everything. We got the gauge factor of two, and then we have all the other information on the right side. So we have our final resistance minus our nominal resistance divided by our nominal resistance. And our only unknown is delta L. So let's go ahead and rearrange this formula to isolate delta L. Let's go ahead and solve for it. We find out that the increase in length of the strain gauge of the metallic film strip within the strain gauge is 0.3 millimeters. 